Hey, in this video, we're going to find out which is better for your backyard birds when it comes to mealworms, live mealworms or dried mealworms. And to give you a solid answer, I dug into peer reviewed papers, looked into what experts say, and even ran my own experiments. All of this to address things like budget, nutrition level, bird preference, seasonality, temperature, and storage and handling. So we'll get right into it and we'll start with budget. If you've started looking for live mealworms, then you've probably also discovered that they're going to be more expensive than buying dried mealworms. One pound of dried mealworms can run between 15 to $25, depending on the retailer. On the other hand, 1,000 live mealworms in brand substrate could cost between 20 or $30 along with the price of shipping or the cost of gas just to get to the store. So at 20 or $30, you're getting significantly less live mealworms than you would dried mealworms. Just as a quick visual comparison, this is half a pound of dried mealworms, and this will last me a while compared to 500 live mealworms that'll last me maybe four or five days. Both cost the same price, but you can see that you get significantly more dried mealworms. Ultimately, when it comes to budget, dried mealworms will save you a lot more money, but there are times when dried mealworms are actually not a good choice for your birds, and I'll get into that really soon. Surprisingly though, when it comes to macronutrients like your fats and your proteins, dried mealworms actually are the winner in this department. In a 2020 study, Dr. Marriott, a professor of food science and technology, published a paper showing the nutritional composition of live versus dried mealworms and determined that the composition of live mealworms is 20% protein, 13% fat, 2% fiber, and 62% moisture. Now with scientific papers, I sometimes like to find other papers that demonstrate reproducibility or back it up. So another study published in 2016 found similar results, 20% protein and 15% fat. The slight differences can be attributed to differing diets and the fact that individual populations will always be different. For dried mealworms, Dried mealworms, by comparison, have a composition of 53% protein, 28% fat, 6% fiber, and 5% moisture. Another analysis from a 2019 study found a, a very similar results when evaluating protein, fat, moisture, and fiber content of freeze-dried mealworms. In their study, they reported 52% protein, 20% fat, 7.5% fiber, and 9.8% moisture. Seeing these results be fairly consistent across multiple studies can help give us confidence in that data. Beyond studies, good mealworm suppliers like Rainbow Mealworms also provide the nutritional breakdown on their packaging and product descriptions. And you can see here that the results of their nutritional analysis is pretty close to what peer-reviewed studies determine. Again, the slight differences can be attributed to processing, dietary factors, worm size, and just, again, individual characteristics of that population. If you notice, there's that moisture content, and hydration is one of the reasons live mealworms start to win in certain situations. During the songbird nesting season, which is spring and summer pretty much, birds are providing their young with a diet of mostly insects and sometimes berries, but it's lots and lots of insects. For nestlings, live bugs and larvae and berries are their only source of hydration. In fact, it's really dangerous for people to provide uh, water to nestlings. So if you find a little pinky in some kind of trouble, don't attempt to give it water. Instead, contact a local rehabber for advice. Anyway, if you're considering mealworms to supplement your birds and help them conserve energy during the nesting season, this is a time where you'd want to spend a little extra money and buy live mealworms. Many bluebird landlords and trail monitors also warn that it's not good for nestlings to be given dried mealworms because that can somewhat dehydrate them. I haven't been successful in finding information in peer-reviewed articles about that as of yet, but this warning does come from very seasoned bluebird landlords, so I wouldn't quickly dismiss it either. Going back to moisture, moisture content in mealworms is so important because as the temperature rises, the risk of dehydration also rises. So again, I'd recommend live mealworms, especially on hotter days. However, an important consideration to have when setting out live mealworms for birds is that high heat will cook those mealworms. So on hot days at or above 85 degrees, set them out during the cooler hours of the day, your morning and evening hours. That's not to say that your birds won't eat dead mealworms, but ants and flies can quickly become a problem. In addition to that advice, if you're buying live mealworms from an online supplier, make sure to check your weather for that week. With hotter temperatures or even really cold temperatures, many live mealworms will die in transit. 
If you're wanting live mealworms during a really hot week or a really cold week, it's probably a better idea to go to a local bird store or pet store and purchase them there rather than ordering online and risking it. Okay, so far in terms of budget, dried mealworms win, and in terms of protein and fat content, dried mealworms also win. And then when it comes to nestling health and overall bird hydration on hot days, live mealworms are the better choice. But what about preference? What are the birds like more? I'm sure you already have a guess, but to confirm this, I put this to the test. I tested dried mealworms versus live mealworms and even versus soaked mealworms. I conducted this test first by putting out three piles on a tree stump just to see what the birds would go to first. And then I repeated this test a few more times using three identical dishes. The results are exactly what you probably expected. Bluebird and Bluebirds and Carolina wrens were among the first customers and they immediately chose live mealworms first. Occasionally one would grab a soaked mealworm or even a dried one, but they mostly chose the live ones first. And once those were pretty much gone or ran for cover, the birds bounced back between the dried and the soaked mealworms. I filmed this experiment using my trusty Blink cameras and I'll have a link in the description where you can see the footage and get more information. So what does this mean? Well, if you're trying to attract certain birds to your yard and we're hoping to do that with mealworms, I would start with live mealworms. When I first got into bluebirding, I tried with dried mealworms because it was cheaper and because the thought of working with live bugs back then was just really gross. And it did attract some Carolina wrens on occasion, but no bluebirds or chickadees or any other real variety. But when I finally started to get the courage to use live mealworms, it made a big difference. So in terms of preference, live mealworms wins out. As I mentioned though, when I was getting started, I was not so enthusiastic about squishy, icky bugs. And that's an important factor in all of this. If creepy crawlies aren't your thing, dried mealworms are a lot more approachable. They don't move and they don't require a lot of handling. But I've found some ways to easily deal with live mealworms so that you're not having to handle them too much and then it doesn't quite feel as intimidating. Live mealworms usually come in bran, that's their food. And while you don't have to separate mealworms from the bran when you're putting the mealworms out for your birds, it does help keep your feeders cleaner and reduces house sparrow attraction. I used to pick the mealworms out one by one from the brand while wearing gloves, and this took a lot of time, but I discovered a much easier way to separate live mealworms from their brand substrate in seconds with little handling, and I'll have a link to that video in the description. So between getting a cheap box of rubber gloves and using this quick separation method, handling live mealworms can become way less intimidating. Another element that may make working with live mealworms easier is that they're stored cold and the cold temperatures of the fridge make them dormant. So initially when you take them out, they're really not moving all that much. So that also reduces that creepy crawly factor. Therefore, when it comes to handling, if you have a system in place, live mealworms can still be approachable. But you may have caught that part where I said that they're stored cold and you're pulling them out of your fridge. And yeah, keeping live bugs in your fridge doesn't sound all that wonderful, does it? So what can I say about that? Is there any fix to somehow make it better? Well, you can order live mealworms in brand substrate. They'll come in a plastic container, and a lot of times it's a clear plastic container with a ventilated lid. But because they're in this fine brand, you really don't see them. So it's not like you're opening your fridge and seeing a container with a bunch of visible worms inside crawling around. Instead, it just kind of looks like a container of sawdust. So the fact that they aren't usually too visible can help reduce that ick factor. Now, earlier we talked about the nesting season and seasonality can be a factor when deciding whether to put out live or dried mealworms. During the spring and summer months, the live mealworms are the best choice. It's hotter and live mealworms help with hydration and it's important for nestlings. But what about fall and winter time? During the fall and winter, there's pros and cons to both. The pros of live mealworms is that it'll help your birds remain hydrated when water becomes harder to find. That's so long as the mealworms aren't frozen. But there are also cons to using live mealworms during really cold periods. First, once temperatures get below freezing, your live mealworms will freeze and die outside. 
Second, with migrating bird populations coming in and more birds searching harder for food resources, you're gonna have a lot more customers. And with live mealworms being more costly, this is going to be harder to keep up with. Now, when it comes to dried mealworms, the pros are that they're cheaper and with such a lower amount of moisture, they're not going to turn it into the icicles as quickly that live mealworms would. Finally, there's a lot more protein and fat concentrated in dried mealworms. And during the winter time, that fat and protein is definitely what your birds need. The only cons would be the lack of moisture, which a bird bath and a good bird heater, bird bath heater can fix that. And then preference pretty much goes out the door when winter hits because birds get more desperate and become less picky. So if I had to choose between live or dried mealworms, during the winter time, I'm going to lean more towards dried mealworms for their ease of use, ease on the budget, and the macronutrient content. Occasionally though, I might put out a few live ones just as a treat. Ultimately, live mealworms are the best choice during the nesting season because of their moisture content and because they're safer for baby birds. They're also a better choice when you're trying to attract birds to your yard, especially bluebirds and chickadees. Dried mealworms are a great choice during the fall and winter because they're cheaper, birds become less picky when it gets colder, and they have a lot more protein and fat. When it comes to storage and handling, dried mealworms are a great choice, but the ick factor is pretty easy to get over when you have some good systems in place to deal with live mealworms. As I mentioned, I do have a quick video about how to separate mealworms from bran in seconds with very little handling, so you might want to check that out next.